Hey, we're very excited uh, to welcome Candace Stump and Morgan. Hello, guys. Hello. They are with the Petaluma Coder Jojo. Candace is a champion. What does that mean? It just means that I'm, my name is on the founding document. I sent them the first email to say nice. I want to start this How thing. How did you find out about Coder Dojo? Well, I met with uh, my husband, who's a tech guy, and John Crowley in a cafe. Local guy. Local guy, well known. right? Yep. Um, and we said, we need a programming club, and we need a place for these kids to get together. Nice. And we discovered that Coder Dojo would provide that kind of umbrella for us. So do they give you curricula? Do they tell you? No, and I think this is kind of important, actually. Coder Dojo is not a curricularized program. It is student-driven and student-centered in the sense that they get to pick projects they're interested on, and they get to drive in, in directions where we can support them. I like so, that, because kids, if given the chance to choose what they want to learn, will we'll choose things they're interested in instead of having it be forced fed to them. If it's, if it's kid driven though, what's the age range of kids that can take part in the program? So we have kids from age seven to 17. Wow, okay, so and quite, quite a gap there. Mm -hmm. okay. It is, and it's not, but the interesting thing about that is some of your younger kids are sometimes some of your most skilled because they really are digital natives and they grew up just sort of feeling like this was part of their natural environment. And so they sometimes have the largest skill set to be going on with. It's great for confidence when a 17 year old comes in and asks you questions. Has that ever happened to you, Morgan? Like the big kids say, Morgan, can you help me with this? No? Well, it doesn't happen as often as you might think, but yes, it does happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about what you do, Morgan. You said you started with Scratch? Mm, well, yes, but it wasn't my main source of learning. Oh. My main source of learning was uh, a, a site called Code Combat. Code oh, Combat. Here. I know about Code Combat. That's oh, where you, you, there it is. You're, you're writing code and, and controlling your character with the code. And, uh, and so you must have found that, were you fairly young when you started doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Fairly. Yeah. A few years ago. So this is the first level with basic equipment. And this is, for some reason, in JavaScript. I, I wrote it in Python, but it's in JavaScript now. Um, Don't you but hate it, it when that happens? I know. It's, it's yeah, every but, day at breakfast. But, yeah. um, but, uh, but uh, this is so. This is basically what it does. It's really simple. He just walks down. Yeah. But you're telling it with those with those code on the right mm -hmm. there what to mm -hmm. do. So did you write that code yourself inside of the game to actually execute yes, the thing? Yes. Okay. Except I wrote it in Python. Now what's but, different well, not, about not, this and Scratch is Scratch has little modules that say turn left, turn right, go forward. So you kind of like typing it out for yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah. That's how you started. Yeah. Yeah. Scratch is a small talk environment that is considered by a lot of uh, educators to be a good way to start kids because they're learning object orientation and they're that's right. modern. So before you that's can right. type, you can touch a screen and exactly. move things together quickly. That makes a lot of sense. What's yeah. the lowest age range for Scratch? Scratch, well, these guys started Scratch. Can you pull up your more advanced level in Code Combat while I'm yeah, just yeah, trying? Yeah. Oh, no, so I just clicked to it and it's ready. Okay. Oh, well, go ahead. Perfect. Let's see. Well, I um, want to so, see um, the more advanced. So, so, okay. so this right here is what happens when you... Uh, this is the first level. Oh, this is what happens have. when you put a lot of effort into it, and this is where I'm at. Okay. What the what? So you have loops, you have conditionals. You define your own functions. You've got functions in there. This Plenty. is fairly sophisticated. Yes. Let's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can yeah. we Can we run it and see what happens? Are you going to win? Uh, yeah. What is the, your can, job can, here? Th <laughs> this is actually a multiplayer level. Uh, so, um, oh, other people can be in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so this, so this is... is uh, and th this is just me against the simple CPU. Okay. So this is what it does. All right. And you can actually watch so it. So I'm this guy, yeah. the simple CPU I didn't code. Yeah. I coded, I only coded that. You'll guy. never defeat me, Morgan. I'll so be, I'll be and the then bad you can guy. actually see the code that's being executed will sometimes be highlighted. Yeah. People there on the so screen. So when you're debugging and stuff, if something doesn't do it right, you can kind of see where you where you made a mistake. Yeah. yeah. And it's a little bit slow, probably. But. This is pretty. Uh, this is real coding, though. This is not, you know. That's neat, right? That's so yeah. cool. When I was a kid, I wanted to learn how to code. I went to the bookstore and bought a huge book called C++, and then I cried. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. As you should have. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. That's, That's right. Yeah. That's so, right. So, uh, how many kids come to the Coder Dojo? Well, as this is finishing up, this is a really good time to talk about that. One of the problems that we slightly have is we don't have enough capacity for everybody who's on our mailing list. Isn't that great? So, which is great. It's so, a good problem to have. It's a great problem. So, it means that we have 35 slots that we can accommodate every week with four professional software engineers and then eight so regular. Oh, there we go. Oh, yep, there's James. He hey, was, James. And there's Glenn. Glenn right there actually gave a presentation a couple weeks ago. He has his own website that he started. He's CEO of his company and he has Jeez. and he has uh, business cards. Oh my God. So there's Barry. He's one, one of, of your, our- One of your teachers? There? Yes. Yeah. 
and that actually... They're all volunteers. They're all, yeah. Oh, I'm right over there. Yeah? Yep. I love it. <laughs> yep, with Henry, actually. This is more than I, so this is a popular thing. Um, it's extremely popular. We have actually a waiting list that's longer than the people we can let in. And, and you mean once a week? We meet once a do, week. Do they have assignments and go home, or how does that work? So they generally tend to pick tracks, and people start off in scratch to give them a sense of the logic absent, yeah. the, t absent the syntax. Right. Because the problem is that people see syntax, and as you know, you go home and you cry, and you're like, ah. And yeah. when I was in college, I had the same problem. What some people are doing there, actually, you can see, is there's also kids doing 3D modeling. Um, there's kids designing stuff, and <laughs> there's James. <laughs> there's kids that are designing oh, look, things. Me and Henry. And, yep, there's Henry. Oh, and there's me. And there's kids that are designing stuff. So that's the scratch table there. Yes, yeah. there's a, there, the scratch table is on you again. one end. Yes, and then we have to get into the library internet. And then there's a table that generally does, we've moved them into scripting, and then there's an advanced table. And the advanced table has both people that already have chosen projects, and so they're moving forward on that, and then it houses the web team also. So some kids are using Windows, some Linux, like you're using Morgan. Some are using iPads, it looks like, there, or tablets. Are there devices available for kids that don't have their own technology? Yes, yes, yes. That's what most people are using. They are similar to this, except they are... How'd you get funding for that, Candice? So we actually don't have funding yet, which we would love to get so we can get more devices in kids' hands. But we have 10 computers that the library allows us to use, and then they're trying to get some more Chromebooks so we can get them only into kids' hands Wait, also. Only 10? There are only 10. The rest of the kids bring their own. Yeah. Um, but beginners, often it works better if you can have them pair programming anyway. So that's Scratch right there, so. where they're dragging mm -hmm. uh, little, yep. little modules. Yep. A great way to start, because you, you don't need to know about colons and semicolons and parentheses. And, Tabs. Are you, by the way, Morgan, tabs or spaces? What? Never mind. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have <laughs> Actually, that's the first time we stumped the kid in two rounds of I'm this. thinking tabs. I'm just thinking tabs. Welcome to my life, sir. Yeah. Um, I actually, um, one thing I think it's kind of important to think about is we're actually not trying to create a classroom. We're trying to create an incubator. And if you think about it that way, you can kind of wrap your head around. You have eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds with some pretty significant skill yeah. in the same room with people who see the power of technology right. in terms of its business applications, but aren't necessarily as interested in writing loops. But those people have a role to play. Right. And so you get them in the same space, and they're designing stuff to be, yeah, see, he designed that, and then we took it, and we sent it to our 3D printer, and we printed it, and we brought it in the following week. Because the... The goal for us is to have them establish a goal and then be able to be successful all the way through from beginning to end. So in a way, it's like a makerspace, but it's like a makerspace for code. Yeah. 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 What is, is this one of the things you made? So we actually have our own maker lab, right? Oh, you um, do too? Yeah, oh, that's great. we do. So, and we have a couple of 3D printers, but this is actually a sensor, a prototype sensor that collects um, environmental data, including CO2. Right. So we use that to kind of measure environmental impacts of uh, farming and... Um, Carbon sinks and that kind of stuff. Morgan, so. what, do, do you want to do this for a living when you grow up? Or Code? What? Yeah. Maybe? Part of what I want to do. Um, yeah. Anyway, I have a little bit more stuff to show oh, right Oh, please here. do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the ladder. Oh, it's still partially attached. It's fitted. Yeah, here it is. Oh, wait a minute. You have a leaderboard. Oh, this yeah. is the leaderboard on yeah. that game. Yeah, it's encoders, yes. Ah. And uh, I'm Rage R3 here. You're doing well. Yeah, and so uh, my favorite part is when I fight myself. <laughs> you can have your algorithm fight itself. Oh, interesting. And these are, these are people from all over the world. There's 25,000 people on that leaderboard. What's this site again? It's CodeCombat.com? So it's CodeCombat. Yeah. And a, a, another level that I really like is called Zero Sum. It's similar to this one, except you got to use a different hero. So would you say, Candice, even for a young kid who's kind of motivated, that this would be a great place to start? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But there's, there's a hand-holding built into it to help kids dive in on their own? Yeah. Um, what we try to do is we try to get the we try to track the beginners to the table that has plenty of volunteers. They start off on yeah. Scratch. Yeah. We try to have them pair program. We have Scratch cards that are laminated that we print out that are here's how to write your first program if you don't really know how to get started. Um, and John Crowley is amazing with the beginners too. He tries yeah. to make sure everybody is included. So there isn't like a lec an adult lecturer or teacher in this because it's not a classroom. How do kids first get immersed? They walk in the door. What's get, their experience? How do they do that? So Morgan has this. Morgan? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Sorry, I didn't see you there. So, uh, <laughs> the way I see it is uh, uh, there are uh, very often uh, brand new people who have never been to Coder Dojo. Yeah. And the way that that usually happens is that uh, at the, uh, uh, um, before anything else happens, before, before the, the, the computer the library computers get handed out, even the very first thing that happens is there's a demo. Oh, yeah. neat. And sometimes two. 
And you might be one of the people doing the demo? Yeah, uh, yeah I've done it several times. Yeah. So they get a sense, first of all, of what you're doing there and uh, that somebody 10 years old could do this too, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty yeah. neat, yeah. So can I jump in here? One third the competence, I'm killing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the fortunate thing about minors is when they earn money, it accrues to the parents. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Is this your retirement <laughs> plan, Candace? Is that what you call it, an incubator? <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, that was good. Um, actually, the kid who produced his own website, he did it on Weebly, which is a drag and drop, mm -hmm. but um, put it on Weebly, and he was making really incredible content decisions. That's so right. he was deciding, here's my product, here's my pay site, what do I actually want my customer to see? And he stood up there and said, hi, I'm the CEO of Helpers MX, and this is my website, and you can take my business card. And the kid's nine. That's really amazing. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is I think that when they understand that this is 100% available to them, then they're so much more willing to dive in. Yeah. And when you see kids next to you struggling with something epic, you get a sense that A, you can do something epic, and B, yeah. you're going to struggle with it because yeah. that's what epic requires. It's, re it's realistic. Yep. It's a realistic experience. So yeah. I do like that. Now, it's not aimed at making a business, right? No. So no. What, what is, do you, Morgan? The, the game has loaded. Oh, well, let's watch. Oh, okay. Oh. So this is what happens. We apologize. I, I have a slightly again. different algorithm on both sides. Are you playing yourself here, Morgan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the, this, the algorithm that you see on the right side oh, so here. this is a way to test algorithms. You could say, well, yeah, what if I do yeah, this and yeah, how will it yeah, fare yeah, against yeah. that? Okay. And um, so I, this, the algorithm you see on the right is actually the one on the blue guy, not the red guy. Okay. Uh, so this is top. what happens when I run it. All right. But he's actually testing this algorithm who, against itself. Who do you yeah. think will win? Oh, yeah. Well, question. according to... If you see the goals before I started, it said success. So the, the, that's something I like to look out for. So wait, you spawn the little things and they run to the middle and whack each other. Is that what's going on? <laughs> well, um, the the the, um, the the soldiers go out to to each defend point to e to each uh, gold point to um, to defend. So it's a capture the flag game kind of. No, but there is actually a capture. There's a game called Capture Their Flag. Right. There is a right. game called that, but um. Uh, anyway, this. So how do you win? How do you win? You kill the other player in under three minutes. Ah. Do you oh, find shut you? Up. Uh oh, <laughs> your code. You got oh, your loop hung. That never happened. You loop hung. So, Candice, yeah. the takeaways for for your students at the Coder Jojo. What do you call them? You probably don't call them students. Ninjas. Ninjas at your Coder Jojo. The takeaway for them is what? What are you? What, are, what is? What are you trying to get them to understand? What are we trying to get is them it, to is understand? It the, is it a skill? Per se? You know, here's the thing. When we started, we didn't know how we were going to do this. We right. didn't know how we were going to figure it out. But we knew that we were going to figure it out. So the biggest thing that I think we want students to get is we want them to take a look at something that they're interested in and just start figuring out how they're going to make progress and then fail and augment that and go back into it and get comfortable with productive struggle, get comfortable with finding people who are interested in the same things that they're interested in, um, what we're really looking for them to do is to take ownership of their interests and find ways to make progress towards goals. So this is really about learning much more than just how to write a computer program. These are yeah. life skills that you're mm. going to use at every step of life. And right. what a great way to learn that. What fun. This is a club I would love to join. You should Coder, get on the waiting list. Coder, I, I, I might. <laughs> I, I might. We already learned his age on the show today. It's yeah. higher than 17. Yeah. Coder oh, Dojo right. is was uh, started in Ireland in 2011. It's spread all over the world. I yeah. love it that we have one here in uh, Petaluma. Yeah. What would be your suggestion for somebody who's watching uh, about starting a Coder Dojo in their neck of the woods? In their neck of the woods. We actually have had some requests from libraries to come in and do a demonstration and train some folks to do that. The biggest thing that you need to do to get started is just decide that you're going to do it and set aside the time. Yeah. Um, the thing that I think has made ours very successful, because we're in good communication with the other Coder Dojos in the area, is that you want to be consistent and you want to make sure that you have plenty of technical mentors on hand to help. Yeah. So, And it doesn't always have to be the same people. Right. right? It That's the nice thing. It's not a major commitment for right. uh, somebody to say, oh, I'm going to be going hours a week every week. You can show up once in a while, make a... Maybe once a month? Once a month. Yeah, sure. You can. A lot of people do come once a week, and they do that because they're really trying to... Like, this is a really complex JavaScript um, drawing. Those were on the scratch cards we were talking about. Yeah. So you can get some really complex at, stuff going. And you know, by the way, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring is so great. Yeah. It's the Napster of education. It's so much better, it's really, than having an adult teach a kid. When a kid can work with another kid, I think... Isn't that great, Morgan? Do you like doing that? Yeah, you can teach somebody your age or younger or older how to do something. I think the biggest thing, if I 
were to talk about it that way, when we had Glenn stand up and, and introduce himself as CEO of his company, and when we have Morgan nine stand, years old. who's nine, and when we have Morgan stand up and say, I did this very complicated algorithm, and you know, he has he's defining functions, he's got nested loops. I mean, it's a it's a complex solution. All of a sudden, you those other kids in the audience are like, that kid looks just like me. It's inspiring, mm. isn't it? And it's inspiring. And yeah. the other thing that for me personally is inspiring is we have girls. We have between five and eight girls attend every week. We'd like to have more. But when I was a kid, they didn't exist, right? right? It was like the presidential election right. until 2000. It Morgan, all... are girls pretty good coders? Yeah, they can keep up, yeah. can't they? Yeah. 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 Are, are there any girls better than you? Maybe just me. Not a coder dojo, no. <laughs> just me. Oh, just me. Maybe just, her, maybe her. Just, just maybe. Careful, just me. She's driving you home. Then again. I think that's great. And, and of course, you want to get more girls in there. And, and you want to make it a safe space for them so they can right. participate and feel like equals, <clears throat> because they are, and sometimes even better than boys. Well, and actually, the number one rule we have at Coder Dojo, what's the number one rule? Ask three before me. That, well, let me say that differently. Be cool. Be cool is right? good. But be cool means not being yeah. too cool for other people. Yeah. It means being cool yeah. enough to help, to collaborate. Yeah, yeah. that's a know, good kind of cool. To support each other. Morgan and Candace, thank you so much. You guys are an inspiration. I think that's really great. If people want to know more, coderdojo.org. Oh, coderdojopetaluma.org. That's for you. And then the yeah. ma main site is probably coderdojo.org. Yeah, and actually on our website it shows the main the main okay, go to thing is up well, there. Well, you know what? Let's get some traffic yeah. to your site then. CoderDojoPetaluma.org. Yeah, and anybody who the, our web team is actually putting That's you know nice site. new That's stuff up good. there all the time. Um, but these are some sites that kids can go to to program at home, which we completely encourage you nice. to do. Nice. Nice. You know, um, the main reason that we exist as as a group is for kids to be able to collaborate it together, but also to get support from mentors. But we definitely encourage kids to go home and code and come when they can. And if they want to start their own, we, we totally think they should. It's nice to have so. a resource, a place to go for kids like Morgan, who are obviously very smart, motivated, very interested, where they can get those resources. And schools, especially for this kind of stuff, aren't really well prepared for kids like Morgan. So it's really nice there's somewhere they can go and, and learn this. Thank we you. have We have kids from every school in Petaluma and a couple nice. in Rohnert Park. Nice. And yeah, it's a great melting pot. It's a shame that little... Little Alex here didn't get that kind of no, no, think about training it. as a youth. If I was him, I wouldn't be here today. I'd be I think, yeah, actually, you're right. I'm glad you didn't. There we go. Yeah. Uh, they, and of course, we didn't have computers when I was a kid, so. No, it was clay tablets. I yeah. I, well, I thought that was a wood burning computer. Yeah, it was wood burning. Steam. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank really you so much nice for having us. Really? Isn't that pleasure. great? It's inspiring. <laughs>